So far, we have considered two examples of linear transformations in Rn. So according to the pattern we've been following in other vector spaces, you may be expecting an example of a nonlinear transformation. Well, instead of giving you an example like that, I will summarize what all the linear transformations in Rn look like. The only way a transformation in Rn can be linear is if it's represented by a matrix product. That's right, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between matrices and linear transformations. Once again, any linear transformation can be represented by a matrix product, including these two. And any matrix gives birth to a new linear transformation. Anything else is nonlinear. So you may be disappointed at first, thinking that, well, I don't have a very rich set of linear transformations to choose from. On the other hand, uh, matrix multiplication is very versatile and matrices themselves are a very diverse set. So it is in fact a very rich set. It is basically as rich as any other space of linear transformations because we will learn that any transformation in any linear space can be represented by a matrix in a very definite sense. This will be a very large discussion coming up soon. It will be titled component spaces. So in component space, any linear transformation from any space is represented by a matrix. And once again, any matrix would give birth to a new linear transformation in that particular space. And there is once again, a one-to-one -one correspondence between linear transformations and matrices. So that's in the future. But for now, let's make sure that these simple linear transformations are in fact multiplications by a matrix. So in all cases, the matrix will be constant and we just have to decide on what the entries are. So this one, for instance, can be represented as multiplication by this three by three matrix. So it will always multiply the input vector, the input vector being A, B, C. And in this case, it actually turns out to be an elementary matrix that has ones here and a two in this entry. So because this elementary matrix is coming from the left, what is its interpretation? Well, it will switch the first two rows and multiply the last row by two. And that's indeed what we're seeing here. It'll switch the first two rows and multiply the last row by two. Okay, so this one is in fact represented by a matrix and it actually happens to be an elementary matrix. What about this one? Same thing here. You should maybe pause the video and decide on what the entries of the matrix are. Once again, the input vector is ABC. And it gets multiplied by this matrix. All right, this one's not elementary perhaps, but we can still give it an action interpretation. This one is the averager of the first two rows, and so is this one. And this one leaves the last row unchanged. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So these two transformations, as well as all other linear transformations in Rn, can be in fact represented by a matrix product where the matrix is constant, right? You are not allowed to put A, B, or C inside this, inside this matrix. So the matrix is constant, and it's a constant matrix that multiplies the vector A, B, C. So it seems very simple. And I think the main takeaway is that the world of matrix multiplication is incredibly rich. In fact, it's so rich that it can capture any linear transformation whatsoever. And there is additional good news. So far, we've been talking about how finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors is an intuition-based, insight-driven process. And sometimes it works when we're lucky or when we're particularly good. And most of the time, I would say it fails. Well, now that we realize that all linear transformations can be represented by matrices in Rn for sure, and for other spaces, it's yet to be discovered. Now we can think about a robust way of discovering eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a matrix. We will now move from talking about eigenvalues and eigenvectors of linear transformations, which is indeed where they come from, to talking about 
eigenvalues and eigenvectors associated with matrices. And we will discover a robust way, it won't be as robust as Gaussian elimination, but nearly as robust, well, I don't know about that either, maybe it's not nearly as robust, but pretty robust for our purposes, way of discovering eigenvalues and eigenvectors for matrices. All right, so that's coming up. So that's good news. And now I just want to illustrate that anything else would not be linear. So for example, here's a few things that make a transformation not linear. And again, all you can really have in these entries is linear combinations of the entries of A, B, and C, right? This is a linear, all of these are simple linear combinations of A, B, and C, or in higher dimensions of the entries of the vector. And what I'm saying is that all you can have. It's one of those facts that's actually too simple to prove. It's kind of clear once you have a little bit of experience with transformations. So here's a few dead giveaways for transformation not being linear. And again, if it's not a linear combination, then, it's, then the transformation is not linear. But just to give a couple examples, if you found something like a squared, well, just like in the case of functions, this would not be linear. And something that looks a little bit more linear, like AB or ABC, let's, I have some space, so let's just make it ABC. This is kind of linear. It's linear in A, it's linear in B, it's linear in C, but it's not linear in, in, with respect to A, B, and C simultaneously. It's cubic. If the vector were to double, this would go up by a power of eight. So there you go, there is your nonlinearity. And something as innocent looking as b plus one, this would be akin to a shift or translation of geometric vectors and causes nonlinearity in its own way that you're familiar with. So that's just some examples of nonlinear, uh, but the point here is that all linear transformations can be represented by matrices and that should be a very liberating and positive thought.